Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of debits and credits in accounting. Now, economic transactions are the things that the accounting information system is trying to um, uh, collect and process and report on. And when we uh, uh, process an economic transaction, what we're really looking for is what is the double impact of that transaction? And when I say double impact, what I mean is the double impact with respect to the accounting equation, A equals L plus SE. Every economic transaction must impact it in at least two ways to keep the equation in balance. When we're actually recording that economic transaction, the way we um, uh, uh, distinguish one impact from another impact is by labeling them what we call a debit and a credit. So one impact is a debit, one impact is a credit. And when you hear the words debits and credits, let me just go ahead and, 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 and get away from a notion of what you might encounter in your day-to-day -day life where you might have a debit card or a credit card, right? A debit card being something that you can use at the ATM or you use to take money directly out of, say, a checking account. Or a credit card where you purchase things on credit and pay for them later. The, the concepts of debit and credit um, defined in terms of, say, debit card and credit card, that is not what we're talking about when we talk about accounting. So, so you've got to get that notion out of your head so that you can consider um, the notion that accounting considers it. When we talk about debit and credit, in, in its most basic form, and this is going to sound so silly, but in its most basic form, what we're referring to is what you see here. Debits are the left side, and credits are the right side. And then, of course, the natural question is the left side and the right side of what? What are we talking about? And so it helps to see the visual you see at the bottom of the screen, and this is called a T account. And this is the kind of visual version of accounting ledgers. So. Every account within a company has a ledger that tracks its activity. And that ledger can be thought of in terms of a T account named for obvious reasons. And when we say that an account has been debited, all we're saying is that a number has impacted the left of that T. And when we say an account has been credited, all we're saying is a number has impacted the right of that T. That's debits and credits. Now, at this point, you're probably saying, yeah, but that's still just a bunch of mumbo jumbo because what does it mean to be on the left and what does it mean to be on the right? Well, that depends on what type of account you're referring to. This slide right here, I tell my students all the time, this right here, th this is a slide that you, that you put a star on. This is a slide that is one of the most important fundamental concepts of how to do accounting. And if you don't ever grasp this, you'll never grasp the, the, the rest of accounting um, uh, in more complex forms. Debits versus credits. Um, debits, so the left side, increases assets and expenses. Credits, the right side, increases liabilities, shareholders' equity, and of course, revenue. So when we say debit, when we say credit, what we're really saying is we're saying increase or decrease, but whether the debit is an increase or a decrease and whether the credit is an increase or a decrease really depends on what account we're referring to. For example, if we're dealing with the cash account and we received cash, in other words, our cash went up, let's say our cash went up by $10, that is a debit to cash for $10. It's the left side because cash is an asset and debits represent assets going up. On the other hand, if the reason we have that cash is because we borrowed it and therefore we have some sort of payable to another party, payables are liabilities. And so if our debt is going up, if our liability is going up, we record that as a credit. So $10 credit to the payable. So this is a situation that you see here. One economic transaction, you borrow $10 in cash. Asset up, liability up. The accounting equation stays in balance, right? A equals L plus SE, up 10, up 10. But also notice the balance within these T accounts. One account was impacted on the left. One account was impacted on the right. And that is how we talk about the impact of economic transactions. Something's on the left, 
something's on the right. Something's the debit, something's the credit. Whether that means up or down depends on the account. And this right here, it is so important. I don't encourage memorization in my courses. I encourage learning, understanding. But let me just say, this right here, this is a memorization item. You must memorize this and you must do it early on when learning about accounting. Just a few notes um, related to this. The side of the transaction that increases it, so in the instance of cash, an asset, the debit side, or in the instance of a payable, liability, the credit side, the side that increases the account is called its normal balance. And, and, and what does that mean by it being a normal balance? Well, let's think of a physical object, all right? And in fact, let's think of cash. You can either have some cash, in this case, $10, or you could have no cash at all, but you can't have negative cash, right? And so the idea of the normal balance is if I were to subtotal these, any asset and expense, the ending balance should be on the left side because the left side represents a positive value or the normal side represents a positive value. The other side represents a negative value and there's no such thing as negative money. There's no such thing as negative supplies or negative inventory. You can't have negative of something. And so whatever side is the positive side or the increasing side, that's what we call its normal side and where the balance is expected to fall. Another thing I want to point out is throughout accounting, you encounter um, several things known as contra accounts. And these happen on all the financial statements. There's contra assets. There's contra equity. There's contra revenue you encounter contra accounts. To whatever extent that you ultimately encounter a contra account, just know it does the opposite of whatever's up here. So a contra asset, debits would decrease and credits would increase a contra asset, right? So it does the opposite. Just something to tuck away for later. Now, you may be wondering um, why is it work out the way it does. Why is it that assets and expenses go up with debits and, and liabilities and equity and revenues go up with credits? Well, it has to do with the accounting equation, A equals L plus SE. Notice in this form right here, which is a little bit expanded from what you might be used to seeing, the assets and expenses are on the left side of the accounting equation. Liabilities, equity, and revenues are on the right side of the accounting equation debits or left-sided transactions make these go up credits or right-sided transactions make those go up and of course the opposite holds true now you might be looking at this going yeah but that's not a equals l plus se that's something a little funky right but a equals l plus se can be broken down if we think about shareholders equity shareholders equity can be broken into two components it could be broken into um basically net income because net income is a component of retained earnings. Retained earnings is a component of shareholders' equity. So you could say net income is one piece you could break out of shareholders' equity and everything else. So the other shareholders' equity. So this would be the, the adjustment for dividends. This would be the uh, stock paid in capital, et cetera, et cetera. You could break shareholders' equity apart like this. And of course, you could further break apart net income into rev minus expense. And then what you're, what you're basically left with at that point is you're left with A equals L plus R minus E plus the other shareholders' equity. And if you want to move everything to where everything is in a positive position, A plus E equals L plus R plus S E, which is the form of the equation that you see up here. And that establishes your debit and credit rules. By following debits and credits for every economic transaction, you keep this basic equation in balance. All right, that's it for um, um, debits and credits. So um, this is just the groundwork, right? Debits and credits lay the foundation of everything that follows in accounting, from journal entries to even creating the financial statements themselves. So I can't stress the importance of understanding debits and credits. But at the end of the day, it's just saying, left side, right side, increase or decrease depending on the account. All right, I hope you found this helpful and I hope you join me for another video.